Hi, I'm Maine, and this is Time Lapse Laboratory. The Brood X or 17 year cicada is characterized by these nice red eyes and a dark black body. It is a member of the true bugs in the order of Hemeptera and is a class of insects that emerges from underground once every 17 years. And this year, 2021, is the emergence of the Great Eastern Brood, which has the greatest range and concentration of any of the 17 year cicadas. So I grabbed all of my time lapse equipment to try to get the once in a 17 year shot. These cicada are everywhere here in mid-May in Baltimore, Maryland. They come out of the ground to shed their exoskeleton. The nymphs will seek out a tall vertical spot to attach and shed their exoskeleton and enter into their adult form. I wanted to film them on the trees, but the cicadas usually come out at night to molt because after they molt they are very soft and the insects take some time to harden up. So by molting at night, they are better able to avoid predators, harden up, and fill their wings. You can see here as the light begins to fade, more and more cicadas climb up the trees. Unfortunately, I don't have the camera gear to capture this molting process in full darkness, so I set up a terrarium to better be able to capture it. This is one of the cameras I had set up in one of the 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. filming sessions that I did. The cicadas knock each other off logs, twigs, trees, and branches very, very frequently, and it's something I noticed throughout the entire filming process. Of the night one filming that I did, this was the shot that I was most happy with. You can see very clearly the cicada exiting its exoskeleton and emerging as the adult form. After molting, the insect leans back so its wings can hang lower than its body. This helps the fluid move into the wings and expand them. This is why in almost all cases, the insects will choose a location that is either vertical or that actually has a slight overhang to allow their wings to hang down more easily and fill with fluid. After the molting process, the wings are only soft for a very short amount of time, so filling the wings up completely with fluid before they harden is very important for the insect's survival. Another thing I thought was really interesting in this footage was how quickly the insect goes from that light white color to this dark black body. And here's that color change in reverse. You can see that the entire body of the insect darkens to be the same color as the eye spots. On the first night of shooting, I didn't have any substrate in the tank because I didn't know how much of a problem the cicadas would have walking around. I also didn't know how long it would take for the cicadas to actually find a space on the tree to start molting. I set up this GoPro in the tank to make sure there wasn't anything interesting that I was going to miss as part of the attachment process. You can see here the insect filling with air in order to crack the carapace open. Then it pumps its body to push itself out of the cracked hole in the carapace and then extend like in the previous clip. I like this profile shot because you can see the pumping as the insect escapes from the previous exoskeleton. The exoskeleton is called a bunch of different things, shell, carapace, exuviate, so I'm just going to refer to it as a number of different things throughout this video. I just want to clear up that that's what I'm talking about. Here you can see the wings extending and unfolding as they fill with fluid. You can also see the hind wing in this shot as it sits behind the forewing and it's not visible in anything but a profile shot. You also see that the cicada is attached to its exoskeleton here. This doesn't always happen, but it does give the cicada some more distance for its wings to hang away from whatever it was molting on. One thing that kind of surprised me was how active these cicadas were right after molting. They didn't even extend their wings fully sometimes before they started to move around. The cicadas also seem to really like knocking each other off of the high spaces and into the ground, which sometimes made for difficult shots as halfway through shots, other cicadas would come and knock them off whatever I was filming them on. They did seem fine even after this happened and you can hear this happening outside very frequently oh that's gonna be another shot the cicadas are fairly heavy and so you can hear them on the ground outside as they land and hit from being knocked off the trees Overall, I was pretty happy with the shots that I got night one and definitely wanted to come back on following night with substrate in the tank and some other thoughts about how to get better shots of this molting process and actually of the adult cicadas as well. So I came back the next day with this in mind. So it weren't many cicadas and then as soon as the sun went down, I was able to find a whole batch of them in about three minutes. So I'm gonna put them into the terrarium here and then uh, start getting some more shots. Day two, I wanted to get more macro shots of the cicadas coming out of the exoskeleton and this one was framed up great until another cicada came and knocked it off. Lucky enough, I moved the camera over to another cicada that was coming out and I like this angle because I can see the legs coming out of the previous exoskeleton and those little fibers that are attached to the previous exoskeleton. This is also an interesting shot because you can see the left wing of the cicada is actually twisted. This happens sometimes, but it's unusual. But well, for some more context, it's about 8.55 and I spent about three minutes uh, in the yard. It's now completely dark and you can hear the grass and you can hear any sort of leaf litter just crunching because there's so many. I'll try to get us some shots tomorrow of what the actual like tall grass looks like because they are everywhere. Gonna add these to the terrarium again. 
the cicada outside are really just attaching to every surface that they can. Uh, anything with a horizontal or a vertical space like this, they are attaching to and unfolding. Night three of filming. Got a lot of bugs inside the terrarium night. Got all three cam all four cameras set up in different angles. Lucky enough, I have that macro lens on that guy. Unfortunately, he's a little out of frame, but I'm hoping that he turns up and then we can see the wings unfold and it'll be nice and in focus. That's the hope. So after an evening of shooting, we have a ton of Brood X cicadas in the tank. After every night of filming, I would go and release the cicadas into the grass in the morning. I was really happy with this shot from night three because I can actually see the cicada carapace opening and the insect emerging into its adult form. I was very happy that another cicada didn't come and knock this one off while I was taking these shots. You can see the cicada immediately starts moving around and you can see a lot of other nymphs moving in the frame. Unfortunately the cicada gets bumped out of frame but it did give me a chance to look at the exuvia here that was left behind and you can see it contract after the adult has left the exuvia. Then you see the cicada come back into frame and you can see that color change from the white back down to the adult dark color that the Brudex cicadas are famous for. Here it is in reverse as well. You can watch the color go from that dark back to the light. You can also see the expansion of the exuvia as well in reverse. I absolutely love time-lapse shots like this because had the cicada not left the frame, I would have never seen that happen. Brudex is actually a combination of three different species of periodical cicada that congregate in mass and practice something called predator satiation. So many cicada come out at the same time that predators are unable to consume them all, and so the cicadas can mate and continue the life cycle process. In some areas, these cicadas come out at a rate of one or one and a half million per acre. And in the month of May and June, approximately one billion periodic cicadas will emerge and go through this life cycle. The cicadas are only alive for a few weeks after this molting process to mate, lay their eggs, and then allow for their offspring to emerge again in 17 years. This is another shot I got from day three, and you can see after the cicada opens up, it leans its body back, still partially contained in the old exoskeleton, and then it actively pumps its body in order to force fluid into the wings so that the wings can fall down and expand. I really loved this shot because you can see the clear separation of the forewing and the hind wing through this expansion process. Also, in this wing shot, you can see how the wing starts out as that white-yellow color, and then as time goes on, it darkens into the characteristic black-winged cicada. Cicadas are also some of the loudest broods of insects in the world, and if you haven't got a chance to hear that, it can be absolutely deafening outside, easily reaching 80 plus decibels, with some reports up to over 115 decibels. So day four, I really wanted to make sure I had all the shots I needed, so I loaded as many cicadas as I could reasonably put into the tank without worrying about them knocking each other off at a huge frequency. I tried to put as much wood as I could at an angle to give the cicadas some room to spread out and hopefully give room for a lot of the cicada to unfold. They still ended up knocking each other off at a really high frequency, but that is kind of expected at the density of the cicada I put into the terrarium. I did want to get one final shot of all of the cicadas molting at the same time to somewhat mirror what I was seeing outside, but just didn't have the filming equipment to look at. Given how many cicadas I had in the tank, it took them a lot longer to find a place to set up because they were frequently bumping into each other and getting knocked off of the sticks and logs and everything else I'd set up in the tank, including the grass. If I were to shoot this again, I would probably put many more smaller sticks into the tank to get the effect I was looking for, but I was pretty happy with how this turned out. I positioned one of the GoPros on the side of the tank so that I could see the underhanging sticks because they seemed to be favoring that location to molt in, and I was definitely right about that in this shot. The cicadas all seemed to get settled and start molting at around the same time, which I was really pleased about. There were definitely some nymphs still moving around, and then later some adult cicadas moving around that were knocking off a few of the molting cicadas, but I was also seeing that outside, so that is somewhat reflective of nature. And I was really happy that I was able to capture both that behavior and the number of cicadas I was seeing outside in this footage. Overall, I'm really happy with how this project turned out, and I'm looking forward to doing similar projects in the future.
If you like this video, please subscribe and hit the notification button so you can be notified when I upload the next episode. I hope you enjoyed that video. The Cicada Brood X emergence is very interesting and the next emergence is forecasted for 2038. If you like this video, you can support me on Patreon at Timelapse Laboratory. There you can find bonus behind the scenes content and other content related to the making of these episodes. You can also follow Timelapse Laboratory on Instagram at Timelapse Laboratory. Thank you.